God bless everybody today. It is December 16th of 2023. I wanted to show you this article real quick. This is important. It's going to impact everything over in the Middle East. It's going to impact shipping lanes and all kinds of different things. I keep talking about how once you start shutting down these straits between all these different continents, it's really going to impact everybody out here. It's going to force fuel to move up. It's going to force um, hyperinflation of products that's going to force uh, different corporations to move freight and oil and other things grains around these uh, continents and not through them and so I wanted to bring this article because I think this is extremely important I've been talking about the Houthis and how they were affecting the Red Sea and how they've been launching missiles against pretty much everything over there and so the Houthis are getting into this uh, battle fairly strong and they are affecting the Middle East at this point to the point where global trade is at risk as shippers shun Red Sea over Houthi attack and to give you the basic highlights Cape transport options add 40% to voyage distance that's huge when you're talking about shipping costs which is going to force everything in that container or that ship or that vessel to basically go up and who these are targeting tankers containers and cargo ships and container rates are already rise to a 20 uh, 2023 high and so this is immediately impacting the shipping industry okay so a number of major shipping companies have paused transiting uh, the Middle East critical I'm going to say this terribly. Bob Al Mendeb checkpoint for seaborne trade December 15th after repeated attacks by Yemen's Houthi militants threatened to um, upend global trade flows. And it's going to. And if you get other straits to close in the Middle East, this will cause. Um, all kinds of issues as they sh keep shutting these six to eight major straits down that run through these continents. Um, the Danish shipping company AP Moller, um, and I'm going to say this terrible too, Meserich, which accounts for 15% of global container freight market, suspended voyages passing through this strait until further notice. Uh, this controls 7% of the container market and also paused traffic through the Red Sea until at least December 18th after one of the ships was attacked by the Houthis. And so we're at this point where um, they have to see whether they can see any kind of control method over here and whether they can stop these rockets and it... Um, you know allows these ships to transport through this place safely but the Houthis are on a war path and that's not going to happen um, I'm pretty sure so we've had this one ship that caught on fire in the Red Sea after it got hit by a missile on December 15th after being um, hit by these Houthi uh, rebels in Yemen the um, it came uh, a day after the Houthis attacked another ship on December 14th with a near miss uh, by a cruise missile. The suspensions are the latest sign major ship charters who in recent weeks have deployed armed guards to safeguard transit through these straits or this strait especially and they have they've been actually adding armed guards in case they get um, boarded or different things like that so they've been trying to counteract some of this but they're not it's hard to counteract missiles that are coming in um, are beginning to reconsider using this narrow strait through which 10 percent of global seaborne oils flow and that's extremely important i've heard that this could affect approximately 9 million barrels a day coming through this strait. Okay, the Houthis have threatened to attack any ship that Israel, uh, with Israel ownership or bound for one of the country's ports. As a result, all commercial ships have come under, come under attack from car carriers to tankers to dry bulkers, including many with no obvious connections to Israel's trade. So that's why I keep saying they're just randomly shooting at everything over there. 
They want to disrupt this area. They don't want supplies to get to Israel. They don't necessarily know who they're attacking and who's connected to Israel. So they're basically just hitting everything. Um, we just sent um, a number of carrier groups over there. And we've also requested, um, I believe, some uh, ships from Australia and other uh, alliance coalitions to go over and help protect these uh, ships in this area um, says the pattern I see in the last few days is more attacks on the on all these container line big boys like MSC um, Maresk uh, NYK line uh, Hapig Lloyd if you scare them then they stop then you stop hundreds of their ships so this is a real problem. And I've been talking about this um, for some time. Um, I'm not going to get into a whole lot more of this article other than I wanted to show you this extremely important map here. So, you know, this is the strait down here where the Houthis are attacking, down here in the Red Sea. So if you shut down this area through the Mediterranean Sea, or the Black Sea, or the Caspian Sea, or any of these areas over here by Iran, different things like that, it's going to force these countries, or these uh, companies to move around, uh, basically around continents, like it shows here. It's hard to show this with that. So if they were going to start here and they would normally want to go to Singapore, they could go through here and it would be about 8,440 nautical miles. But because they can't go through here and this is basically being um, under control and we're seeing missiles being launched into the Red Sea from here, to get to Singapore they're actually having to go all the way around Africa into Singapore, which adds approximately 3,300 miles onto this journey which costs companies a whole lot more money okay and that's why this is so important this is why i've been explaining to you for some time that we have to watch these straits you have to watch this one here you've got the one here you've got one up here you got one going into the caspian sea you got um this up here in the Black Sea, this area over here, anything down in through here and a number of other areas, they all have to move around the continents one way or the other, okay? So this is a real problem. It's going to really cost companies a whole lot more money and you're going to watch everything from grains, oil, you name it, start going up and this will cascade as we move into 24. I'm not going to go into the whole article, but this is what I've been talking about. There's a 20 mile wide area here, so it doesn't take much to hit these ships with a missile, okay? And it doesn't, they don't have any warning before these missiles come on top of them and they're trying to knock them down and all this stuff. There's just no time to do anything about it. This lies between the Horn of Africa and the Gulf Peninsula, connects the Red Sea to the Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea. It, ac it accounts for about 8.8 .8 million barrels of total oil flows in the first half of 23. And so that's what you talk about, about approximately 9 million barrels a day. That's going to impact how this oil's moved who's going to get the oil because another thing you have to think about is if these guys are shipping their oil to further locations they may want to ship it to places like china and russia instead of moving it to other places because it's closer so there's a lot going on here in the background you have to sort of look at um they're looking at their margins. They don't necessarily care who they're selling their oil to. And as these oil reserves start to try tighten up, even though we have a global slowdown, a lot of the oil is going to the war machine right now. Um, we're going to see this dynamic change. Um, so it's extremely important. Uh, the suspension uh, 
route by two shipping companies um, so far there may be more companies that are actually going to uh, stop shipping through here um, add an additional 40 percent to the distance of this voyage and so i think this is something that we need to be aware of um, if we have a war risk um, this is something extremely important uh, freight forwards um, also increasing rates on shipments for example container bound with middle east uh, will now attach a war risk surcharge of a hundred dollars uh, per ton i believe i may be wrong on that on dry and reef, on reefer cargo according to a document seen on s p global so it's it's hitting them on all kinds of different levels and this is going to just keep raising this up if um you know this changes brent will move up um i have seen some change it went up about um it was up about one percent on the week um if this still starts to really break down you're going to watch fuels move up towards a hundred dollars a barrel again if the whole middle east breaks out you could see 125 150 dollar or higher oil um, as we move forward into 24 but that's if you have a major breakout let's say turkey gets in this game or whatever um, you have another front with Hezbollah opening up you have this front with the houthis hamas is going to take months to um, deal with um, and so this is not going to go any away anytime soon and as all these other straits start to have issues they're going to just avoid the whole middle east and that area in this uh, grouping through this whole area nobody will want to ship through this area okay they're all going to walk or, or ship around the continents not through these areas at all if this all lights up because the middle east which is this area here and it includes portions of the african nations affects a large portion of prophecy so it really matters okay this is extremely important that you keep abreast of all these different things and i've been warning about straight closures for some time in my videos and i knew this was going to happen because it always happens when we have major wars break out they shut these places down no one's going to go through it and it drives prices way up in that same breath so i just wanted to bring this report to you because i think it's extremely important and you need to watch this um this situation is not going away anytime soon it's just going to keep accelerating he warned you god warned you that you're in the birth pains and sorrows right now i've done videos about this you're not in tribulation yet you're not in great tribulation you're in the birth pains and sorrows once you get to a signing of a treaty you start the 1260 days of tribulation remember when satan is thrown down and controls the false prophet and the antichrist he's here for a short period of time of 1260 days which is the time of the signing of the treaty to abomination once you hit abomination you go into great tribulation so you have the birth pains and sorrows which we're in now once you see the signing of the treaty, you start into tribulation, you go to abomination, you go to great tribulation, and then we move forward into the wrath phase after the seventh trumpet happens. And so it's extremely important that you understand where you are. Right now you're in the birth pains and sorrows, and this is going to accelerate into a transition into tribulation once Antichrist shows up and signs that treaty so we got a long way to go here folks and that's what i keep talking about i'm going to tell you again i'll keep bringing this up today is december 16th we have 1386 days to the feast of trumpets of 2027 which is on october 2nd in my opinion that is when the seventh trumpet will happen it's on a sabbatical saturday it's on the day of the potential east gate can be open the lord tells us he'll come back through the east gate and that the temple can only be opened on two days 
a new moon or a sabbatical Saturday. And so it's extremely important that we understand these things. But he will fulfill the fall feast when he comes back. So we need to understand um, that he fulfilled the spring feast when he died, was crucified, rose, and shed his blood to save us. That he will fulfill the fall feast when he comes back as he tells us he will. And God never lies to us, so I'm expecting that's exactly what he will do. So... For 1,386 days, things are moving quickly out here, and I wanted to give you this report on how these uh, straits are going to affect the Middle East as we move forward. God bless. Have a great night, and be safe out there. Get your oil in your lamp, and get ready, because this ride is just starting. Um, have a great night.